to the On The Air podcast, a companion to On The Air magazine, a bi-monthly magazine for beginner to intermediate ham radio licensees. I'm your host and the editor of On The Air, Becky Schoenfeld, W1BXY. Every month, the On The Air podcast expands material found in On The Air magazine to help you learn more about all the things the ham radio hobby and service has to offer. The On The Air podcast is sponsored by ICOM for the love of ham radio. Welcome to the June 2025 episode. We are outdoors today because it is spring and it is field day season. Uh, we're a couple of weeks away from ARL's field day for 2025 coming up June 28th and 29th. And with me today, I've got ARL's contest program manager, Paul Bork, N1SFE, our digital RF engineer, John McAuliffe, W1DRF, and education and learning support specialist, Max Friedman, N4ML. Welcome, Paul, John, and Max. Thanks for being yeah. here. Thanks, Thanks for having us. All right. Thank you. So, um, so yeah, here we are at ye old picnic table like many of us will be for field day weekend coming up in a couple of weeks and uh, we know that the larger groups um, the clubs and some other groups are probably well underway with their plans um, and uh, we'll talk a little bit about what a newer licensee uh, might be able to do for field day but I got to tell you I was looking at the field day locator Earlier today, um, ARL has this wonderful Field Day Locator page um, that's at arl.org slash field hyphen day hyphen locator. And um, you can use it to find the Field Day operations in your area. And today there were more than 850 operations on there, um, a whole bunch of them everywhere. And I know there's going to be even more added to the map yeah, in the they're, next they're couple weeks. We're adding tons every day. Yeah. So, and it's a great resource for you to find a field day near near you especially if you're just starting out you don't really know any groups that are doing field day a field day locator is a great way to find groups that are getting together near you and it'd be a great opportunity to meet up with some new hams uh, or some other hams as a new ham yeah and uh, this year's field day theme is radio connects and connecting with your local club is the first step to a storied history in amateur radio um, I know most of us are members of clubs, big and small, and uh, it points to a lot of our greatest memories and, and favorites in amateur radio. Yeah, field day is a great time to make ham radio memories. So um, with the field day locator, I know that there are all those pins. You go to it, you'll see all these pins on the map with all these operations that are going on. And um, if you click on the pins, you get some information um, as to where the operation is, what group's putting it on, who the contact person is. Um, is it a good idea to let a club or group know you're coming if, if you're planning on dropping in on their field day? It, it couldn't hurt. A lot of groups don't require it. A lot of groups just have a, have a just a you know, drop on by yeah. a mentality, but it couldn't hurt. It's always, it's always good to have a point of contact, um, you know, so that when you show up, you're like, hey, I'm looking for N1SFE, is he around? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And a, a lot of clubs will have somebody that is actively greeting visitors and mm -hmm. new operators as they come to their mm -hmm. event as well. Yeah. So field day, there's always a lot of um, activity on and off the radio. There's sometimes there's a lot of people running around, you know, sort of um, checking on how everything's going, greeting guests. Um, so if somebody shows up at an established operation, what kind of expectations should they have about actually getting to get some time on the air? Well, a lot of groups have what's called a GOTA station, G-O-T-A, which stands for get on the air. That is a specific operating position specifically for new and relatively inexperienced operators to get on the air. You might even be able to you know, experience a, a, a new mode or a new band that you don't have access to in, on your own equipment if you're just starting out you're probably you know, most people have either a handheld transceiver or maybe a, a, a mobile rig or one of those rig in a boxes but you may, maybe you don't have a lot of uh, equipment and give a good opportunity for you to be able to operate on some stations that you don't have access to there also will be a experienced control operator manning the uh, go to station to help you 
uh, get familiar with the radio. A lot of times many radios are very different, especially if you've used one radio before, it may not be the same as using a different brand radio. So having the uh, go to op is a great resource if you're a new ham and inexperienced to uh, get on the air and also will let you get on the lower HF bands where if you're a technician, you may not already have privileges down that low. So if you if you manage to get on the air at a go-to station, you don't go it alone there. There's somebody there to sort of shepherd you through everything. That's great. Exactly. And yeah. in fact, uh, field day operations are incentivized to have a get on the air station because mm -hmm. they, the QSO totals count towards the overall score, mm -hmm. but it doesn't change their category. Mm -hmm. So they want you there. <laughs> so um, Max, you mentioned uh, field day operating category. Mm -hmm. um, so if someone is newer and they're thinking about, you know, what kind of setup could I put together for field day, are there certain categories that um, might be the best for somebody who's new with this? Yeah, so if you're brand new and maybe you just got a, a setup at home or a setup for uh, parks on the air or another operating activity outdoors, the easiest thing to do is to just match what your setup is to the available categories for individuals. And that's going to be two primary categories, the, the Bravo and the Delta. The easiest one to do is the Delta, because that's just your home station plugged into your home power with your home setup. And so if you just want to get on the air and use field day as a way to practice your skills, mm. you can just get on, take advantage of all the operating activity and make some contacts and get better at operating. Mm -hmm. The Bravo station uh, category is quite interesting because it very heavily mirrors what a parks on the air activation would look like. This is you take a setup out into the field or a non-regular operating station or position, and you set up. Um, it even has further endorsements for uh, non-alternative power sources. Yeah, and battery so, power. Yeah. Exactly. And so this is a way, if you want to practice parks on the air, or if you're already proficient at parks on the air, to get out and kind of double dip as well. Yeah, many many uh, Class B participants do also do a parks on the air. They'll, they'll go set up in a, in a parks on the air park and beyond for field day at the same time. And you don't need to do a special parks on the air exchange. So you can give the regular field day exchange mm -hmm. it still counts mm -hmm. as a parks on the air activation. So, so could you, uh, as a as a Bravo, a B class station, could you go into your backyard with a power source and? Typically, we really like to see a, a, a class B station be somewhere where you go out and yep. operate somewhere. However, if you are totally disconnected from your home power and your regular station antennas, mm -hmm. so it wouldn't be like if I were to decide, well, I, I have an antenna hung up in the tree, I'm gonna take my radio, put it out on a picnic table and hook up the antenna to it. Okay. Technically, that's not really a B, that would be a class D oh. or E home station, depending on whether I'm on commercial mm -hmm. or, or a battery or okay. non commercial yeah. power. Oh. Okay, so folks have some options, it sounds yes, like. That's exactly. great. Um, how about in terms of, um, you know, say someone's a technician, maybe a relatively new one, been licensed for a few months, um, and and they've got these technician level privileges. What kind of options do they have for field a uh, field day operating? Yeah, well, you have a couple great options. Well, we are at the peak of the solar cycle, and so 10 meters has been performing quite well, even in the summer. And so you can use your 10 meter privileges across all three modes. Um, for those uh, special technicians that have gone and learned uh, CW or Morse code, you do have some Morse code allocations, though that is a little bit rarer. And of course, you have the entire world of VHF, 50 megahertz and above, um, which, ha which will have a lot of activity during field day. Um, and six meters has been quite open. Yes, it has been. Um, at the time of filming, um, I can say that uh, six meters has been open to Europe and to South America from Connecticut, and it will continue to do that for the rest of the summer. Now, I'll also add, interject, so we are at the peak of the solar cycle, but that's for better or worse. Uh, we have also seen a lot of bad solar activity, typically solar uh, storms, geomagnetic storms, and that has killed a lot of the HF spectrum uh, recently. So if you're thinking about uh, operating HF, just be aware of that, that it, it may work out in your favor or it may not. And uh, there's also the case where the bands are middling on HF. and in that case, think about um, what other types of operating you're interested in doing. Uh, 
what's become more and more popular over the years is digital operating, uh, specifically the use of weak signal modes that are able to cut through the noise while during less than ideal band conditions. Uh, so even if the bands are good, think about for next year and years after that, what sort of contingencies do you have in place if the bands aren't so great? Um, do you have a really good uh, digital uh, setup to cut through noisy band conditions? Uh, and then also in that context, uh, if the bands are middling on field day, can you set up a digital station for yourself to uh, get up on the air and make uh, contacts and uh, take full advantage of the 10 meter digital privileges you have as a technician class operator? Um, yeah, on last month's on the May podcast, um, we had ARL education specialist Wayne Green, KB4DSF, on, and he talked about um, using the FT modes for field day. Um, if somebody's relatively new, how easy or difficult is it to get set up for the FT modes in order to get on uh, there for field day? In well, my opinion, it depends on what radio you're using. Uh, to uh, There are many radios that have a built-in USB sound card and they're really designed to interface nicely with the computer. And for those radios, it's a very straightforward, simple process. But for some radios, it's going to be a little bit more difficult. Older rigs that are uh, before the advent of commonly used computers uh, may require some finagling to set up uh, for digital operations. And in which case, you may need to go buy uh, some extra parts to get it to all work properly. But that is a good segue into our May On The Air Live, where we talked about how to set up FT8 for field day. And we, uh, Wayne Green, uh, was able to cover that content in about an hour. And that entire recording is available on the ARRL Learning Center. So yep. you can go watch that back, and we have our slide deck. And, uh, I'll, and I'll add that with modern radios, it really is quite a simple process, mm -hmm. even for the special field day exchange. And folks can check out that May episode at learn.arl.org. Um, if you're an ARL member, you can just create a login for that site and you have access to uh, the recording of that May 27th live stream. Exactly. Yeah. VHF. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> if, you're, if you're a technician, you're all about VHF yeah. mostly, right? Um, and VHF is very easy to get on. Um, it can be a little complex if you're going to go kind of all the way, um, as I'll say, with uh, CW or, or SSB. But one of the field day bonuses is to make a satellite contact. And you can make your you can make a Yagi at home out of a tape measure and some PVC pipe. And you can use your Baofeng or whatever cheap radio you may have. That's all you need to make a satellite contact. And satellite activity, once again, will be quite popular during the weekend because everybody's hunting for that bonus. Mm -hmm. And satellites are a very even playing field. So if you don't have a crazy 100 watt station that's got, you know, a giant beam antenna, you're on the same playing field as someone who does. And it's just going to be a matter of proper timing and, and good operating practice to really get the most out of a satellite pass. <laughs> Um, actually, a good recommendation uh, for techs, I would say, um, is recently, uh, on, our, on our time scale, we released that Momo Beam, uh, which is that 10 and 6. And mm -hmm. so with that and a single feed and a radio that can do both bands, you'd be able to kind of play with both uh, from wherever you are. And the nice thing about using a beam on field day, especially a compact beam, uh, like a Momo Beam or even uh, some other small uh, 6 and 10 meter options, is that first of all they're pretty easy to deploy all you need is a mast and you can just bring it up and you can turn it manually and follow where the propagation is coming and going to which is really important on on six meters especially because you'll find that six meters will open to one area and then it will move to another area and so getting the most out of the uh, vhf bands and also 10 meters uh, will depend on following where propagation is going to be best Okay, so with field day just two weeks away, what are you guys going to be up to that weekend? Well, there's going to be a bunch of us on the air at W1AW, as is the tradition. Mm -hmm. So lots of people love the hunt for the mothership. <laughs> so we will be on from uh, W1AW as a Class F, which is an, an emergency operations yep. center. Uh, so there, I 
think yeah the, i think that's all four i think four was here yeah. Yeah. I'll be at a different in some time there yeah yeah all at different times i know i i i, I, volunteer, I volunteered myself for the overnight yes. so if you're gonna work wnaw from about 10 p.m to six in the morning it'll be me or whoever else is uh, is out there with me. I, I typically typically do two uh, field day operations. I get on from WNAW on Saturday, and usually I'll get on as a class D or E from home, oh, yeah. just to make a few contacts from mm-hmm. from the home station. All right. Well, I will see you guys there. Yeah. All right. <laughs> and hopefully we'll see all you there. Yeah. Yeah. Out there in podcast land. Yeah, so um, for more information about ARL Field Day, you can visit arl.org slash field hyphen day plenty of information on the arl website uh, including the rules and a lot of other resources about scoring and uh, special scoring bonuses Um, and in the meantime uh, good luck with your field day planning hope you have a great field day weekend and thanks to paul john and max for being here today hope you've enjoyed this episode we're going to be back in july with another one Uh, In the meantime, feel free to send comments to ota at arl.org. And if you're not an ARL member already, you can learn more about the organization and membership at arl.org. This is Becky Schoenfeld, WNBXY 73.